Oh, hello there. In this exercise, we're going to rig up a walk cycle animation and direct you to thousands of sprite sheets that you can start rigging up for practice purposes and for gaining inspiration for your own future sprite sheet designs. First, let's take a look at the finished product. We have a character that is walking east and below it is the sprite sheet. And you can see that the sprite sheet has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames. So we're going to step over eight frames to produce this animation. Now we're going to use code that's very similar to the code we use to render the bouncing ball. So now let's target that div with CSS. And we can start giving it properties. We'll set the background to the URL for the image path that we want to use, the sprite sheet. So this atom.png is that sprite sheet with eight frames for the walk cycle. And I'm going to make this file available to you guys online so you can grab it for testing purposes. Now the width of this sprite sheet is 960 pixels. That means each cell is 120 pixels wide, or each frame is 120 pixels wide, and the height is 180. So we put width 120 and height 180. Now if we look at this in any browser, we see the first frame only. Now all we have to do is add our animation property, which directs a keyframes animation called walk east to play. And that keyframes animation is going to be set at a one second duration. So that's the speed. You want it to be faster, this number goes lower. If you want it to be slower, this number should be higher. So you can adjust the speed of the walk. And steps is where you assign the frames. Since our sprite sheet sequence, that, that animation sequence has eight frames, we have to put eight in the steps. And we put infinite so it'll loop. And this can also be a number. Now, just like we did for the bouncing ball, all we need is the walk east keyframes animation that will adjust the background position for this sprite sheet. That way it shows the proper frames in sequence. So we have a keyframes animation called walk east. And it takes the background position from zero pixels to negative 960 pixels. And somebody asked me yesterday what, why I put the negative here and not just the normal 960. And I put negative here so that my frames run the exact same way that I have them laid out in my sprite sheet forward. I mean, it might sound counterintuitive, but this makes the, the animation sequence run from left to right, just like you read. And you can test this yourself by numbering all of the all of the cells, all of the frames. Just put little numbers in them, and you'll see that it runs in order forward this way. And if you take the negative off of there, your frames will run backwards. And there's really a lot of different ways you can set it up. Your sprite sheet could be just the design of your sprite sheet could be laid out backwards, and then you can have remove this negative there. But I wanted my frames laid out in logical order forward in my sprite sheet. Okay, now let's preview this in Internet Explorer. And we have character walk cycle running. Preview this in Firefox. Now in order for this to work in Google Chrome and any WebKit based browsers, you have to put the WebKit prefix on your animation line and then add another line for all other browsers that respect the standardized syntax like Firefox and Internet Explorer. So for Google Chrome, you have to add this extra line. And you also have to add an, a whole other extra keyframes rule that has the WebKit prefix on it as well, right? here. So if I had my code like this, then I put that there and remove that here. This will work in all browsers now. I'll go File, Preview in Chrome. And there's the animation running in Chrome now. And you File, Preview in Internet Explorer. It still works in Internet Explorer because Internet Explorer is respecting the standardized syntax for the keyframes and the animation. So I'm just going to remove the WebKit prefix 
you guys can add those prefixes on your own for any old browsers that you want to support as well. Okay, here's the homework assignment. You go to Google and you can type in walk cycle sprite sheet and then hit images. Now, what you can do is borrow these sprite sheets. You can download them and use them in your program just for practice purposes and for gaining inspiration on how to set up and design your own sprite sheets and for just gaining insight about video game design and all that stuff okay so you can check out all this and you'll notice that some of these sprite sheets here if you if you type in anything sprite sheet like bird you'll have sprite sheets with bird wings flapping and all you have to do is rig up that uh, rig up those frames and you'll have an animated bird or you can see how animated birds are created for video games and things like that. Or even for Google Doodle, you ever see the Google Doodle animations on Google's homepage? A lot of that stuff is sprite work. So if you type in video game sprite sheet, and you'll see that you have all kind of animation sequences on one big image file. And that's traditionally what sprite sheets are used for. You can pretty much put all the video game graphics on one sprite sheet. So go into Google image search and put anything before the words sprite sheet. Like if you put warrior, you'll get warrior sprite sheets, fighters and things like that. You know what I'm saying? Now if you go to adamcorey.com and then hit ebooks, you'll see the sprite programming mastery ebook. Now, you don't even have to buy the book to get some of the preview information. You can just wait for the preview PDF to load and scroll down and you'll see some of the preview information and click the introduction to dynamic animation and you'll be able to realize how video game creators are doing all the work that they're doing because you're going to have to know JavaScript if you want to introduce dynamics into your sprite programming workflow that way you can directly control all the sprite sheet animation sequences dynamically for instance take a look at this sprite sheet now what the sprite programming mastery ebook shows you how to do is have a sprite sheet like this one you now all of these little frames are on one image file and you can have one frame with the character just standing still looking forward and then when the user presses a certain key or hits a certain button then the character can start walking east. Then they hit a different button and the character can start walking west and all kind of other things like that. All of your graphics are preloaded when the software first loads and you can direct any of these animation sequences on large grid style sprite sheets. All right, so I hope our little discussion about sprite sheet rigging has proved helpful and maybe even inspiring to some of you guys to start digging a little deeper into it. And remember, you can get a lot of inspiration from these ready-made sprite sheets that are found on a Google image search. But just remember, you can't use them in your software, but you can use them for practice and inspiration.